Good afternoon. I'm really sorry that we had some technical difficulties this morning in worship. Uh, we know what the problem is. We actually got it fixed after worship, but um, that does not help you who were able, who were not able to join us live and in person. So here is a little bit of a redo of this morning. So again, please accept our apologies. In our prayers this morning, we remembered uh, we remembered all of those who are listed on our bulletin, but we also uh, prayed for continued healing for Art Ayers after a heart surgery on Friday of this week, and also continued healing for Mark Odland after a hip replacement this past week as well. So please keep them in your prayers as well as their family as well. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God from which nothing can separate us, and the life-giving Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the words, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except that of knowing that we did your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus said to the twelve, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them. For nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and, so both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of all of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the Gospel of our Lord. There was a time early on in my ministry career where I would have called myself an ordination junkie. Part of it is natural, especially as you graduate from seminary. You form these friendships with others in your class. You want to celebrate with them as they are ordained and begin the work of serving the church that you've been about for preparing for at least eight years, if not longer. Excitement rises to the forefront. Pride in your friend's accomplishments wells up within you because you know that they're doing and thinking the same thing for you, at least hopefully. I don't go to quite as many ordinations anymore as I used to, but I'm still a junkie. Part of it is that we get to worship instead of lead. We get to hear the word of God proclaimed uh, and the call of the candidate talked about, and it reminds us of our own sense of call. I went back this week to my ordination sermon preached by my pastor and mentor, Pastor Bill Utrecht, from First Lutheran Church in Muskegon. He was speaking to me as one who was about to be ordained, as one knowing my struggle with being vulnerable about my vision and limitations, and as one who sometimes connects to others out of that vulnerability. He was talking to my former congregation, St. James, and he said these words, Folks from St. James... Wash Travis's and Kristen's feet. They need to be cared for. They need to be loved. Ministry is tough work, tough work that does not belong to one person alone. 
The suffering love that is our mission and ministry is a shared responsibility. The ministry that belongs to St. James, and I'll add to the whole church, is a gift to one another and the responsibility of all its leaders and people. Friends, I probably wish that I took off this week instead of last week and had Pastor Shearer preach on this Sunday. All of our readings make no qualms about it, especially our gospel reading from Matthew. Ministry is hard. Proclaiming the gospel, making Jesus known in the world is absolutely hard work. It doesn't matter if you're ordained and wear an all but a stole or not. Ministry and proclaiming Jesus in the world is something that is given to all of us, the church, and you never know what you'll encounter along the way. There are some Christians who preach what we call the prosperity gospel, or this movement that thinks if we just think positive and have enough devotion, we can somehow transcend poverty and illness. The more you have, the more you'll be blessed, and you can have that wealth too if you just follow this simple five-step plan. As great as that sounds, think about that for a minute. I've prayed and believed in Jesus' work of healing and God's omnipotence and power a long time in my life, and I'm still blind. Many of you have lived good lives, worked wonderful jobs, contributed to the good of your family and society, and you're still poor, only able to live off what you draw from a pension or social security. Life isn't that easy. Faith isn't that easy, and ministry certainly isn't that easy. That's what Jesus is saying this morning to the disciples, that he's sending out with the same power that he has. They will be given the power to heal and cast out demons in Jesus' name. And here is their ordination sermon, their graduation speech, their commissioning service. Jesus says, this isn't for the faint of heart. It's enough for the master to be the leader. Be content with where you are. In ministry and in life, the truth is going to come out. Don't be afraid. Don't keep secrets because eventually the truth will be revealed. So just tell the truth to begin with. There's a part in the middle that we'll come back to in just a minute, but at the end, Jesus offers even more gloomy words. As if saying last week that people won't accept them and they should just shake off the dust of their feet from the towns that will not have them wasn't enough, Jesus says, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Proclaiming Jesus' message that the kingdom of God has come near is not for the faint of heart. That kind of devotion to God and Jesus might just mean it cost you your life and your relationships. See, the disciples are about to become apostles, the fancy word that just means sent ones. Jesus is sending them out to continue his ministry, and they will reach way beyond the places and people that it's possible for him to reach. And Jesus wants them to be well prepared for this sending out into mission. He wants to prepare them for the hard things that may and will happen along the way. So he tells them to expect conflict and division. Expect to be yelled at and mistreated. Expect to be lonely, because sometimes devotion to Jesus and God is an incredibly lonely place to be. And yet there's promise. Just like pastors who are ordained and graduates who complete degrees and go on out into the world in service to their field, Jesus will not leave them. Jesus will be with them through whatever they face, the good and the bad, the joy and the tears. And perhaps, in my estimation, the strongest promise of hope is the promise that Jesus says, you are enough. Our bishop reworded that this week to say that you are precious, and both are true for the disciples and for us. So hear that for yourself. You are enough. You have everything inside of you that you need to go out into the world and share the gospel of Jesus, that God has come near, and that nothing can separate us from the love God has for the world. In this world, we aren't promised a smooth ride. Crap happens. And you can turn that into another four-letter word, should you wish. But it's true. Crap happens. Things crash. Businesses end. 
life doesn't always go the way that we want. Even so, God is with us, and we are still enough. If you do nothing else today, go home and say that to yourself. I am enough. God has claimed us, gathered us into community, and God sends us each day into the world to serve it and share love, light, peace, and hope. We are exactly who God needs to do that. And we are enough. Amen. Sisters and brothers, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. In the way of announcements, we said a special thank you to our choir, to Jerry, and to Ruth for all of their work this year. This was the final Sunday for the choir. They're taking a break for the summer, and they'll be back in September. So we wanted to celebrate them uh, with a special little coffee hour in uh, with a little special treats for a coffee hour this week. And so please thank them if you know anybody who sings in the service. Vacation Bible School registration is underway and so is our need and plea for volunteers and help for our Amazon wish list. Thank you for all of your support. We're sponsoring also an American Red Cross blood drive here on July 5th. You can sign up for an appointment online by calling the toll-free number or let the church office know and we can help you sign up for an appointment. Sisters and brothers, go in peace. Reflect God's light through love and service. Thanks be to God. God's blessings to you today and always. Peace be with you.